What is going on guys, Scorpion Slayer 66 here, coming at you with my cassette tape collection. Now, I haven't been collecting cassettes for too terribly long, only about like two months now, but I've amassed a pretty decent collection for only two months. Uh, all of my local record stores and thrift stores sell them for like 25 cents to $2 a piece, so they're really cheap and if it's an album I don't have, uh, I can get it on cassette and that'll hold me over until I have the vinyl. So yeah, um, it is kind of an alphabetical order, but I separate my favorite tapes into two racks which i'll save for the end save the best for last so yeah uh, let's get right into my collection the first one i have is bruce springsteen born in the usa i picked this up and i didn't have the vinyl at the time um but i eventually picked it up i was supposed to show it in my last video but i never did but yeah um classic 80s album i mean dancing in the dark is still probably my favorite springsteen song so yeah uh classic 80s album Next is Bruce Springsteen, Darkness on the Edge of Town. Probably in my top three favorite Springsteen releases, just really raw in terms of Bruce Springsteen, very emotional, and uh, yeah, again, couldn't really pass it up for two bucks. This was actually pretty exciting because this is Bruce Springsteen, The Ghost of Tom Joad. This is actually a pretty rare vinyl album, and it's not the easiest cassette to find, so I actually only picked this up for a dollar, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay. Um, it was worth the dollar. The next is Bruce Springsteen, Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Um, again, I mean, two bucks. I'm not the biggest Bruce Springsteen fan, but when you see albums that people consider classics, you tend to pick them up and try and listen to them. And uh, yeah, definitely worth a few bucks. Another one of my favorite Springsteen releases, this is The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Shuffle. Um, I actually connect a lot to Bruce Springsteen because my parents used to own a cleaning business and they actually cleaned for the E Street Band's pianist, so I actually kind of inadvertently like knew Springsteen and I saw a lot of artifacts that a lot of people don't know exist and a lot of pictures, so yeah, uh, anytime I hear uh, the E Street Band I automatically get a little bit nostalgic, so yeah. Next is Carol King Tapestry. I fucking love this album. I have it on vinyl tape and actually 8-track, um, so I just need it on CD and I'll have it on all formats. The next is Candlebox. Now a lot of people don't like this album, but the metal band Ghost, who I really fucking love, said that this group was hugely inspirational to them, so I haven't listened to this yet unfortunately, but uh, yeah, again, it was only a few bucks. A classic album, this is Derek and the Dominoes, Layla, and other assorted love songs. Now, the song Layla is one of the best songs ever. That opening guitar riff is just fucking stunning. So, yeah, I do have this on vinyl, but, you know, sometimes you don't feel like throwing on a vinyl, so. The next is In Excess Kick. Um, on many greatest albums of all times list, um, it's a pretty good album, but I don't see the hype behind it, I guess. The next is Michael Jackson Dangerous. This actually isn't even mine. I promised to give this to my good friend Yese, but, uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest MJ fan. I think he's kind of overrated in my personal opinion, but uh, yeah, for you, buddy. This is very exciting. This is Metallica, the 598 EP, and this was actually Metallica's first demo. So yeah, um, my record store actually put this aside for me because they knew I'd be interested, and uh, yeah, very cool. My dad freaked out when he saw this a little bit because he remembered having this back in the day. The next is Prince Love Sexy. I have way more Prince tapes, um, you'll see. Uh, I saved some of the better ones for my tape racks, but yeah, I mean, uh, it would be cool to have a complete Prince tape collection simply because he's one of my favorite artists of all time. The next is Prince Parade. Again, just another cool add to the Prince collection for two bucks. The next is Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water, one of the most classic albums of all time. I mean, the song Bridge Over Troubled Water is amazing, but there's also, um, Cecilia is the one I'm thinking of and The Boxer. So really awesome album. Uh, if you guys don't own this, you should definitely check it out. The next is Simon and Garfunkel, Parsley Sage, Rosemary and Time. Now I'm a pretty big Simon and Garfunkel fan. Uh, so anytime I see anything that I can add to their collection, I definitely will. The next is Stone Free, a tribute to Jimi Hendrix. So this is a bunch of different artists covering Hendrix songs and Hendrix is one of my favorite artists of all time. The Jimi Hendrix experience is one of the greatest bands of all time. So. Yeah, I added this for like only a dollar to my collection. The next is Stone Temple Pilots Purple. Now, I really love grunge and punk tapes, uh, simply because I think the genres were made for it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this has Pretty Penny, which is one of my all-time favorite songs, so had to add to the collection. The next is Tracy Chapman Crossroads. Now, Tracy Chapman vinyl is kind of hard to come by, so, uh, and I'm a big fan, so when I saw this, I definitely had to add it. They really do need to fucking reissue her albums, though. 
This is U2 Achtung Baby. Um, I'm not a U2 fan, like, at all, but I've seen so many greatest albums of all time lists have this, and many people recommend it as one of the best U2 albums. So I didn't feel like picking it up on vinyl, so when I saw it for a dollar on cassette, I had to grab it. The next is the Ghostbusters soundtrack. What do I say? So the majority of the rest of the tapes that are in my not as good pile are bootlegs, so this is a Slime Attack, Slime Attack demo. This is literally one of the most worthless pieces of music I've ever listened to in my life. But it's on a green cassette, so that's pretty fucking cool. The next is Nap Takers. Now, this is a really fucking awesome punk album. These guys are local to me, and they played a few shows around late 2009, early 2010, and some of the best performances were compiled onto this tape, and it's actually really fucking good. Uh, there's only 10 of these in the world, so it's kind of cool that I own one. To be honest, I don't even know what this is called, but this is a really awesome, like, hardcore punk tape. And apparently these guys live like an hour away from me, and they just stopped being a band like late last year, so kind of unfortunate, but cool enough that I own this, and there was only like 25 of these made. So this is called White Guilt, and again, this is another punk tape. Uh, really awesome. Uh, I don't like the vocalist that much, but the music behind it is actually very good. So yeah, again, really limited release. Again, I have no idea what this is, but uh, for two bucks, I'll add anything that looks kind of hardcore punky to my tape collection. This is Anti-Citizen Bootleg. These guys are, again, another local punk group to me, and uh, yeah, it's just pretty generic punk, but uh, definitely worth adding it to my collection. This is Sharkanoid Have a Great Summer. Uh, again, another local band, really actually good, and it's on this awesome, like, baby blue cassette, which is something I don't have besides this, so yeah, um, I picked this up just because, again, it has, like, that punk aesthetic, and I was right, and it's actually one of the better punk tapes I own. All right, now getting into my rack cassette tape. So these are more of my favorites or things that are worth more. So uh, let's get right into it. Beatles cassettes are worth a lot of money if you guys don't know. So if you ever see them while you're out in the wild, definitely pick them up. I mean, I've never seen any go for under like 15 bucks. Uh, so this is Abbey Road. Um, I actually only picked this up for five bucks. All of my Beatles tapes I got for five bucks a piece. So yeah, uh, one of my favorite Beatles albums and uh, really happy to own it on cassette. This is The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night, my favorite pre-Rubber Soul Beatles album. Next is The Beatles' Let It Be, one of the most underrated Beatles projects in my personal experience. Um, most people don't give this the credit that it's due, but it's a fantastic fucking album. Next is The Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. This is one of the more common ones, so this can sell for like 10 bucks, but again, I re rarely ever see them go below the $10 mark. Of course I had to fucking own it, Revolver on tape. Unfortunately, this has a lot of playback issues, um, so it's kind of unlistenable. So if anybody has a replacement copy, let me know. This is probably the most expensive cassette I have in my collection, and this is an original, uh, unedited version of Rubber Soul from the 70s. And yeah, um, this cassette can sell for like 20 to 30 unsealed, but originally I had it sealed, which is worth about 50 bucks, depending. Uh, that's usually how much they sell for on eBay, so... Yeah, uh, really cool to own this. Again, it has a lot of playback issues, but just cool to own it. Next is Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, great album. Uh, again, I'm just a huge Beatles fan, so I had to own it when I saw it. Probably my favorite piece in my tape collection, or definitely one of my favorites. This is the Beatles' White Album, split into two tapes. Um, this is just really cool because I love the White Album. It's one of my favorite albums, and it's just cool that I've never seen an album packaged with two tapes besides like the Woodstock soundtrack so yeah uh, again pretty expensive to find the pair together. Next is Bob Dylan The Times They Are a Changin. Uh, this is one of the last Bob Dylan albums I really want for my vinyl collection so when I saw it on tape I had to grab it. Another one of my favorite pieces of my tape collection this is Whole Live Through This. Uh, like I said earlier I really love grunge and punk tapes they just seem to be made for like tapes as a whole and this is one of my favorite albums of all time so yeah uh this was an original and i got it sealed for only a few bucks so really excited to own this one this is Jimi hendrix experience are you experienced one of my favorite albums of all time so again picked it up for only a few bucks so this is my favorite piece of my tape collection and this is nirvana in utero this is an original and again i got it sealed for only a few bucks so yeah was super excited to add this if you guys don't know this is like one of my favorite favorite albums this is easily my favorite nirvana album and yeah uh it sounds really awesome on tape 
probably the rarest cassette I own. This is Phil Spector, A Christmas Gift for You. Now, if you guys don't know, this is touted as probably the best Christmas album ever because it was done by Phil Spector, who did a lot of the Beatles, like, producing. And yeah, uh, this is not easy to come by. I mean, it's not the most expensive, but it's definitely not easy to come by at all. So yeah, I only picked this up for two bucks. So really excited to have this one. So this is the Sex Pistols, never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols, another one of my all-time favorite albums, and again, like I said, I love punk tapes, and this sounds fucking ferocious on tape, so yeah, really awesome piece of my collection. So moving on to my second and final tape rack, this is the Dazed and Confused soundtrack. Now, I've said a lot of things before about my favorite movies, but recently I've been thinking that this is my favorite movie, and it's definitely my most rewatched movie, and it's just a kick-ass fucking soundtrack. If you guys like 70s music, definitely try and hunt this one down. The next one is Depeche Mode Violator. I do not have this on vinyl yet, and it's actually kind of hard to come by uh, unless you're buying a reissue, so I uh, had to get this to hold me over until I get a vinyl copy. The next is The Doors LA Woman. Uh, I used to really not be into The Doors all that much, but recently I've been listening to them a ton, so it was kind of just fate that I ran into this at my record store and had to add it to my collection. The next is Fleetwood Mac Rumors. I own multiple copies of this on vinyl, and uh, so I had to pick it up on tape when I saw it. Next is Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, the only good Guns N' Roses album in my personal opinion. But yeah, uh, really cool. The tape on this is actually like a really cool color. Um, it's kind of hard to show on camera, but yeah, uh, cool to have this one in my collection. The first tape I ever picked up is Led Zeppelin Houses of the Holy. Yeah, this is the one that started it all. Um, I just wanted to have a tape for aesthetic purposes, and then I kind of just got into the whole tape craze that nobody's really into yet. But um, yeah, just cool to have this one in my collection. The next is Led Zeppelin 1, my favorite Zeppelin album. And it's actually in my tape player right now because I was listening to this right before I started shooting this video. So yeah, uh, amazing album and I own this on vinyl and tape, so. The next is Led Zeppelin Untitled, but most people know it as Led Zeppelin 4. Uh, most people's favorite Zeppelin record. Um, I mean, it has like Stairway to Heaven, Rock and Roll, Black Dog, all that shit. So yeah, great fucking album and definitely worth owning on tape. Another one of my favorite Zeppelin records, this is Physical Graffiti. I mean, Custard Pie and Cashmere just seal the fucking deal with this one, so yeah. This is really fucking awesome. This is Mad Villain, Mad Villainy. Uh, this is an album that I never stop talking about. It's an album that I will forever cherish. And uh, yeah, my little brother got me this on bootleg tape and it actually sounds pretty decent for being a bootleg. This is Pink Floyd, The Division Bell, the only Pink Floyd tape I own, sadly. Um, and this one unfortunately has playback issues. Uh, but it's on this really cool like seafoam green slash blue tape but yeah it has a lot of playback issues uh it slows down a lot which is unfortunate but still cool to own it for only two bucks this is prince 1999 um like i said i have my better prince tapes in my favorites rack so yeah uh awesome album really underrated in terms of prince's discography i've seen a lot of people say it's one of his least best albums but in terms of just general songs it's definitely one of his best to me this is Prince Sign of the Times, and all you need to know is that Starfish and Coffee is one of the greatest fucking songs ever made. The next is Prince and the Revolution, Purple Rain. Now, this is my favorite Prince album, but lately I've been kind of struggling between this and Sign of the Times, but yeah, fucking classic album. If you guys don't own this, what the fuck are you doing? And the last tape in my collection, this is the Red Hot Chili Peppers Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Now, I don't own this on vinyl yet, simply because an original is hard to find and the reissues are like 35, 40 bucks and I don't feel like paying that. So yeah, this is the only Chili Peppers album I really enjoy front to back. I mean, they're songs obviously, but yeah, um, really cool to own this one on tape. So yeah, guys, that is my entire cassette tape collection. Let me know what your favorite one was down below. Tell me some albums that are fucking essential on tape. And yeah, guys, please like, comment, subscribe down below. Until next time, take care.